everyone, I am going to take you through how I do my Christmas tree pictures. So the first thing I do is I tidy up around the tree and kind of straighten up the ornaments. If you have kids, I'm sure your tree has been, been redecorated quite a few times. And then I vacuum just to make sure the area was clean. The next thing I did was wrap some presents. Um, it just kind of makes the tree look a little bit more complete and authentic. and we kind of put them around the tree. I thought I was gonna use that blanket, but I ended up not doing it. So what I would do is just pull out things you think you're gonna use and then just kind of start playing. And then this was my final product. Um, I added just a little bit of texture, a few presents, but mostly you just wanna keep it simple. So this is the tree right after I finished shooting and what I wanted to show you is that every single light in the house is off. The only light that is in the house is coming from the Christmas tree and then that nightlight in the background, but that won't matter. Um, so this is important because if you've ever gone to buy light bulbs then you know that lights come in different temperatures. And so you, to make your editing a little bit easier, you want to make sure you're just having one temperature of light. Also, if the only, if the only thing illuminating your child's face is the Christmas tree, it makes it a little bit more magical. So here Landon actually went to the bathroom and so he turned on the light when I was recording this and then I had trip flip on the light in the back of the house and you can see just how it takes that magic away. And you can also see my kitchen, which is not completely clean from dinner. So that is why you want all the lights off. It just kind of makes it more magical. And you can see here when the last light gets flipped off, that, that just looks so much better. My sweet husband followed me around videotaping the chaos. So the biggest thing is just keeping the boys right up on the tree. Um, obviously the house is really dark, so you wanna get as much light on their face as possible. You can see when they look away how dark their faces get. So I'm just asking them questions, interacting with them. Uh, they're kids, so they're not just gonna stand there and look at the tree in amazement. So I'm asking them questions like, which one's your favorite ornament? And luckily Rhett will pretty much do anything Landon does, so I just have to keep Landon engaged. So as far as settings, what you're gonna wanna do is put your camera in auto, and then you're going to take your ISOs and jack them way up. I shot most of these at ISO 8000. I went back and I looked at last year's, I shot those at about 6400. So it just depends, there is no set number, it's going to depend on so much. However, you're in a dark room and the Christmas tree is the only light source. So you know your ISOs are going to have to be super high. The shutter speed, you want it to be pretty low. So I shot most of these at one over 250 and then aperture, you wanna open it up as much as your camera will let you. So I shot most of these at 1.4 to 2.2. Then I went and grabbed my cell phone. I did flip on a light behind me. I just made sure that it was still mostly dark in the room. That just helps the cell phone out a little bit. But then I used the same strategies of keeping them engaged and close to the tree. And then I just snapped away. I did get a lot of blurry pictures just because this phone did struggle with the low light, but I was still able to get pictures that had the same essence as the DSLR pictures. So now what I'm doing is I'm using the eyedropper tool to click around the picture to try to find a white balance that I like. I never got it exactly right by using the eyedropper tool. We have white walls and gray floors, so the pictures always were cooler than I preferred, but I made sure I got a white balance that seemed like it wasn't too red, wasn't too green, wasn't too yellow, wasn't too blue. I got it close enough, and then I would go in and tweak it myself using the white balance, the tint slider, And then here I went into split toning and I added some red to the highlights, which then meant I messed back with the white balance on the main screen. So it's just like an ebb and flow, constant back and forth. And then I went to the calibration tab and added some red. I upped the red primary and I decreased the blue primary. And then I went back to split toning and messed with that more. I had also added some blue to the, high, to the shadows. And then I had already messed with the exposure, the shadows, the highlights, the whites, and the blacks. 
And the good thing is, is that once you get this set, you can just copy and paste it over. So these are the same settings that I had on that last picture, which is a similar setup. So then I just had to go in there and tweak the white balance a little bit. I um, up the exposure and up the shadows. And then I'm messing with the tint again in the white balance because it's a constant battle with these pictures. And then I am in split toning. So it looks like I added just a tad of red into the highlights and blue to the shadows. And then once I'm in Photoshop, what I do is I use the levels to bring some brightness to their faces. So these I'd already done some basic editing on, so I just went back and added some levels because uh, I forgot to do that. So now this is a fresh edit. So what I'm doing is I'm cropping the picture and then I'm cloning out Lena's hand where he had been laying on the floor, as you saw in the video, where he was laying right next to Rhett. So I just take his finger out, and then Rhett had a roll at dinner the other night that had egg in it, I guess. So he had a little bit of eczema. And then I'm using levels to bring some brightness to his face. And then I am using dodging and burning to darken the edges, and then bring a little bit of light on his skin. And then I basically just do that process over and over and over and over and over until I edit all the pictures from the session. So same thing, cropping. And then burning the edges to get it really dark I like it to be super dark. I like the only thing to be lit is like the Christmas tree and their faces, which is different than my typical edit, but I do like these being dark. And then I'm using levels to bring brightness to his face. And then I did take it back into raw and tweaked it a little bit more because it's a constant battle. And then that is that, that picture is done. So here are the final pictures. So you just have to know with these that they're going to be grainy, but you're taking pictures in the darkness. But I think that these are some of my favorite pictures that I take all year. So now I'm taking the pictures I took on my cell phone and I am just bringing them into Instagram and I added a filter. I pulled it down a little bit. And then I kind of just messed with the same things that I did in Photoshop. So I'm playing with the vignette, which is kind of like the burn effect. So it's just adding some darkness to the edges. I'm messing with highlights and shadows. So I brought the shadows up, pulled the highlights down, messed with warmth. I bumped the, I think I cooled it down actually a little bit. And then I messed with overall brightness a little bit. So then I did the same thing on another picture. So it's again, it's all personal preference. I like just a little bit of a filter to add some contrast and bump up the colors and saturation and such. Then I am messing with adding a vignette, pulling the highlights down, the shadows up, messing with the warmth. And then again, same thing. So adding a filter, messing with the shadows, brightness, highlights, temperature, and then I added a vignette to just darken the edges. These are some of my favorite pictures that I take all year. So I hope that this video was helpful and that you're able to create some really magical pictures of your kids. And I would love to see them. So please share. And I hope you guys have a Merry Christmas. Bye guys.
thank you.